and I'm a librarian at the Trafalgar branch and today we have a video about Van Living 101. Our presenter is Erin Davidson who spent a year traveling around the U.S. with her boyfriend while living in their van. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Davidson and I'm teaching Van Life 101 today. Uh, so my boyfriend and I about two years ago made the big decision that we wanted to travel more and so we sold Pretty much everything we had moved into my mom's house for about a month um, in transition and then hit the road and uh, we traveled uh, around the United States with our dog mostly for a, on and off about a year and it was an awesome experience and I encourage everyone to take a leap of faith and travel in some sort of way for an extended period of time um, if you can do it in a van that's awesome if it's some other way that's great too uh, we're just going to be talking a little bit today about how we traveled in our van, answer some of the questions that we often get, and um, yeah, so let's just dive in. So as you can see, this is our van, <laughs> and here, let's go to the next slide. I'll talk about what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so whether you have a van already or some kind of vehicle where you'll be building your vehicle out, uh, we're going to talk about the difference. and you know, weigh out your options, um, what you can do for money and work. Um, a lot of questions are based around money um, coming at us. We're not afraid to talk about the challenges or um, actually the benefits of traveling full time. Um, and then just the basics, you know, like where to shower, where to camp, those kinds of things. We'll get into those. And then because we are traveling with our dog, I don't know if you can hear her little pitter patters on the floor. Um, traveling with pets was super important with for us, we had, it was kind of a learning curve, um, but we'll get into that as well. And then of course, some inspiration, some people to maybe follow on Instagram um, and things like that. So let's get into it. I might have to move my camera here. Okay, so we looked around at several vans before deciding what to do. It probably took us about six months to figure out what we were going to do. We ended up buying this 2002 Chevy Astro um, but before we did that, we looked at um, vans that maybe we wanted to build out personally. Um, we were kind of didn't really know what we wanted. It was our first time, of course. Okay, so we ended up with a 2002 Chevy Astro. We actually, we live in Indianapolis. We drove to Cincinnati on a school night <laughs> and um, to look at it and lo and behold, we brought it home with us. So the reason we um, fell in love with this van was it was already built out pretty much. This picture um, right here with us sitting um, was the night that we bought it. So you can see that already had shelves, it already had a bed, had some insulation and things like that. So the person that we had bought it from, Luke, built it out in Alaska, drove it down the coast, all the way over to his parents in Cincinnati, um, where we bought it from him. So. He did an awesome job of building it out, it had laminate floors already. Um, we really appreciate all the work he did. We did end up changing a few things just to suit our needs. Um, but if you can find a van that's already built out for you, that's the way to go. I tell you what, because we do not get along when we're doing handiwork. <laughs> so um, one of the things that we did, we added a roof rack and an awning. So the awning comes out kind of like in an RV would so we can cook dinner under there if it's really sunny we can sit under the shade so we added those two things we added some additional shelving just to like kind of fit what we needed better like our water was a little taller than you know and things like that some additional shelving for maybe some cooking supplies and things like that um, we did end up adding a little bit of insulation um, and changing it as you can see in this picture these pictures when we first got it it was just the insulation it wasn't anything special a lot of people put like wood and stuff on top that adds a lot of weight so we decided just to put fabric over it so it ended up being like orange fabric to kind of meet match these other curtains um, and then just about a year ago we added a two inch lift kit and got new tires so you know we can do a little more off-roading <laughs> so yeah that's our little baby um, if you cannot find a little baby that you love <laughs> you may consider building out your own van and that's totally awesome too. If you're gonna do that, there's just a few things that we encourage you to think about. Um, space, there's little of it, so you definitely want to 
use every inch possible um, under the bed, um, under your shelves even. <laughs> so under all your seats, every single space can be used for something. And you're gonna move things around hundreds of times before you figure it out. But um, just think about space differently. Um, maybe tour some like tiny homes or something like that. See how they're using their space wisely. Um, when I think about building materials, I think uh, about maybe your door handles, your latches um, on your cabinets and things like that because you are not building something, a structure that is going to be standing still. It's moving, it's rocking, you might be going down bumpy roads, things like that. So things will eventually break or come loose. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're building things, so give it kind of the shake test or something like that. So um, insulation is super, super important. I mean, you're living out of this van. Um, if it doesn't come with any kind of insulation, you're going to want to add some. Um, it keeps it, I would say, 20 degrees difference um, if you had it and didn't have it, and that's keeping it warm when it's cold and keeping it cooler when it's hot. Um, so we have insulation for um, every single window, so when it was cold, we definitely needed those, um, and when it was hot, it would keep the sun out too, and that would definitely help too. The last thing I would consider doing is making a list of your needs versus your wants. And we'll probably dive into this several different times, but to us, we didn't need a toilet, a sink, a refrigerator. Um, we had a cooler and that worked just fine for us. Everyone's needs and everyone's wants are gonna be different, um, but maybe do some test drives first before you spend the money on the expensive things. So if you're going to have a refrigerator, you're gonna need a way to power that refrigerator. So if that's solar panels, um, the solar panels and the battery are very expensive. So we didn't really need those things for, for, for our traveling needs. Um, I know that there's plenty of travelers out there that want those and that's totally fine. Um, just kind of figure out what you really need before you spend the money. That way you don't regret, uh, I, why did I buy that? I never use it. So. Uh, so here's the picture of with the bed out and like our water and shelving and things and this was before we added all this other stuff so you can kind of see the the difference there so let's go to the next slide okay so more on <laughs> needs and wants um, so I kind of touched base on this already the solar panels and batteries so we actually got like a little fold-out solar panel it's not mighty by any means but it would charge our phones when we were driving and things like that. Um, we also, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this thing would plug into our car or um, cigarette lighter. And we had things plugged into this all day. And it, I mean, cause you're driving a lot, you know, you're traveling in a van. So really, and it's got USB ports too. So we had one, two, three, seven things plugged in at a time, every time we were driving. So we had multiple batteries that we could charge that way and things like that. So. This, uh, I think we got off of Amazon, so. Um, sink or shower, we actually ended up buying our own, um, this picture down here, we built our own shower. Um, we used it a handful of times, but really there's a lot of places that you can shower, um, whether it's for a small fee or something like that. To us, it wasn't important to have a shower inside the van. First of all, we have an Astro van, which was, is, small to begin with, so it wasn't gonna work for us. If, if that's something that you don't think you can live without, you know, can't shower, you have to shower every day kind of thing, then um, maybe considering a shower would be important. But if you're going to do that, you need to make sure you build it with materials that aren't going to be extremely heavy or weigh down one side of the van more than the other. Um, it's just something to think about um, because when you weigh down your vehicle, your gas mileage might go up or down or what, whatever you get it um so just something to think about um for us the astro to add new tires and increase our clearance was important for my boyfriend not so much for me because <laughs> he likes to go down you know crazy roads um maybe roads that are meant for four-wheel drive only and you know i'm holding on the whole time like do we have to go down this road um so if that's important to you to explore 
into the wilderness even more, then that's something you're going to want to think about. Um, and then as far as like a kitchen goes, I know you've probably seen a lot of vans that have full kitchens built out in them. Um, they look super awesome. To us, we just had this up in this top picture, a two burner propane Coleman grill. Worked awesome for us. <laughs> we just cooked outside every day. That's the kind of difference is that we were just living outside of our van. We weren't living in our van. Um, the people that cook in their vans, that's great too. I just always think you're going to have to deal with cleaning up a lot. Um, the smell of your, your last meal will linger for a long time. Um, so things like that. Just think about, like I said, do test runs. Can I cook every meal outside? Am I able to do it without a sink? Um, things like that. So, and then a refrigerator versus cooler. We kind of talked about that already a little bit too, but do you need a refrigerator? Um, are you going to have ice cream every night? Something like that. So, okay. And then if you're going to buy a van, like we did, we looked, we found our van on Craigslist, but we looked on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace, RV Trader, Cars.com, all those websites. Um, but I think that Craigslist is good at finding your more eclectic type of vans. Um, there's also on Instagram, you can type in the hashtag vans for sale and things will pop up as well. But if you're gonna buy a van, a few things that you're gonna wanna consider when you're looking is how's the gas mileage? Is it heavy? Is it going to, I mean, because you have to think gas was our number one expense. And that's because we're driving thousands and thousands of miles and we're driving every single day. So you want to make sure your gas mileage isn't like really terrible. Ours was about 17 miles per, hour, miles per gallon, which isn't great, but it was not terrible either. Um, think about your height and your weight. So your resistance, like I said, if it has tons of built out with tons of wood or you're going to build it out with tons of wood, um, that's going to weigh you down. That's going to affect your gas mileage. Maintenance costs. <laughs> so one of the good things that, about having a Chevy Astro is that it's a Chevy. And pretty much no matter where you go, if you're in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, and you need a repair, they're going to have the parts. If you are looking at any kind of Volkswagen, you might run into issues with trying to find mechanical parts. There's also the stigma around Volkswagen that they break down often, they need repaired often. So there's just some things to consider if you have some backup money for those issues, then that's great. But if you don't and you want something reliable, just do your research on the vehicle. And another thing is to know the history of it. Luke told us everything he knew about it. He built it out, um, told us there were a few things wrong with it and whatnot. He was very honest and that was wonderful because now we've been able to fix those things or just keep an eye on a few things. Um, so just try to get a van that you know the history of it. I know some of these vans are from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and you might not have the full list, but um, the, the most you can get about it, the better. So, all right, let's talk about the basics. Let's get into it. So something, I mean, we're in the midst of a coronavirus right now, it's, and it's been crazy, and we've had to find solitude, and we've had to kind of rely on ourselves. And I think we're handling this really well because we have done van life. And van life forces you to slow down, and it forces you to be kind of fluid and um, be okay with uncertainty. Um, and that's challenging. That's super challenging. But I think that we grew a lot and learned a lot through that process. And um, that's why I always say van life, it's, it's not vacation. It's, it's a lifestyle. You're living um, outside of your van and you're figuring out what to do every single day. Um, and it's kind of like a job, really. Um, we would wake up every morning, not sure where we were going hiking yet. Not sure where we would get internet service, where we, what we were going to eat that night, things like that. So it was just challenging, but um, like I said, we learned a lot. So um, that's just something to look forward to, I think. Okay, so where to shower? So we, ha um, our members of the YMCA, 
and we kept that membership because you can shower pretty much at any YMCA, which is awesome. Um, and there's like tons of them. But I've also heard um, Planet Fitness, not Planet Fitness, um, one of those fitness places has like 9,000 different places that you can go to. I think it is Planet Fitness. Anyway, so um, we also showered at a few KOAs. Um, we just call ahead and say, hey, um, can we shower? Some of them would charge, and that was fine. I mean, it'd be like five bucks a shower, and it's worth it. Um, like I said, we built our own shower, so we do that in places that we had a lot of privacy. We did shower at a few truck stops. Those are pretty expensive, so you can, if you can avoid those, that'd be good. Um, but other campsites as well, not just KOAs, but other campgrounds, um, will maybe charge a small fee to camp or to shower. Um, so we really didn't have a problem. I mean, I think the longest time we went without one was like four days, which was kind of gross, but <laughs> we figured it out. Um, especially out west, there's a lot of places to shower. So where to camp? Um, to be honest, we only paid to camp maybe four times in the entire year. And that's because we used National Forest. You can camp anywhere in National Forest unless there are signs that say otherwise. Um, BLM land, so public national land. Um, plenty of it out west, plenty of it in Utah. Um, you can camp there for free. And there's, you can see where other people have camped. So you might be driving down a forest road and it will open up to a clearing that already has a fire pit and everything, which is awesome. Um, we camped in so many beautiful, beautiful places um, that it's just, it's just crazy that you can do it for free. So we paid to camp at a few, um, like state parks. Um, one time it was my birthday and we're like, you know, we really want to have a, a real campfire with marshmallows and all that stuff. Um, so we, we got a campsite that night, just a few different places around that we were like, you know, let's just do it tonight. But even then, you're not spending a lot of money. So um, I encourage you to buy a National Park Pass if you're going to be visiting, you know, three or more. It pays for itself. Um, and because you don't have a lot of Wi-Fi, make sure that you don't forget your actual paper map. The Atlas can come in handy. Um, also, a spare tire, safety kit, all of those things, because if you're in the middle of nowhere without cell service, you're going to be out of luck. Um, there's a few other things I wanted to show you here. We oops, got two of these off of Amazon as well. It's just a USB powered, I think it's the end of it. It's a USB powered fan. And so that came in really handy when the, on those hot nights. Just having a fan blowing on you is great. Um, and then this is our, I think it's eight gallon water jug. So you can fill this up at Walmart or pretty much any grocery store has a place to fill up water um, for really cheap. And we would wash our dishes with that. It was kind of like our sink, brush our teeth with that, um, drink our water out of that, everything. So um, we filled that up probably like once a week. So it was really good. Okay, let's talk about money. <laughs> see if I put this up here. Um, so first of all, it doesn't have to be expensive. We were concerned about the money. Um, we saved for about a year before we left. We tried to sell everything that we could before we left um, to, to save that money. But honestly, at the end, when, you know, I'm, I was pretty good at keeping a budget and everything, but at the end, we were surprised to see that we actually spent less money traveling full time than we did living in a house and indeed, you know, going out and doing things with our friends. So, um, just a really good experience. Okay, um, it doesn't have to be super expensive. One of the things that you want to think about is it's not vacation. You can't treat it like vacation. It's it's your life. So, um, you can, even though you are in all these cool places, um, you can't go get ice cream every night. Um, we try to cook as much as possible and go to the grocery store. Um, we tried to plan out what we were gonna eat. Uh, we did splurge in a few places. Um, so, you know, when we were in Texas, we had to get some 
Texas barbecue. When we were in Kansas, we had to get some Kansas barbecue. Um, just like, you know, when cities are known for something, we try to splurge and try it out. Um, because we are being adventurous as well, we don't want to miss anything. Um, and another thing is to make sure you have a budget and try to stick to it as much as possible. Um, and if anyone has questions about how much to budget and things like that, feel free to reach out to me. I can share you our budget. I'm going to show you my dog because she's being a little turd. <laughs> so I'm going to go let her out and I'll be right back. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about budgeting, just let me know and I'll share our budget with you. Um, I'm open to being completely honest about how much we spent on things um, and how much we, I think that you should budget. Um, so in order, what we spent our money on was gas. Like I said, we drove a lot. Um, food, we have to eat every day. <laughs> um, vehicle maintenance, so there were a few things that we ran into. Um, we had to get new shocks on um, our tires. That was very expensive. Um, just a few things here and there that really added up. And then of course, oil changes um, was included in that as well. Um, so I didn't sell my, my actual car that I had before this. So I still had my car payment, um, which was a big chunk of monthly payments that I still had to make. Um, if we did this again, you know, it'd be great because I wouldn't have a car payment. Um, but maybe if you were buying a van that you have to have a car payment, this would, that's where that would fall in. So um, other entertainment and experiences, um, we splurged on a few things um, when we were traveling just to make sure that we didn't miss anything. So that came in. Um, our phones and our data plan, um, just to, I was working remotely, so you know we had to have a, a decent data plan. And then lastly was camping. Like I said, we did most of it for free. Um, and that's pretty much, all we spent our money on, everything that we spent our money on fell, fell into those seven categories. So that was really wonderful. Okay, so there's some other ways to save. Like I said, camp for free. No matter what, you can find somewhere to camp for free, whether it's a Walmart parking lot or it's um, awesome views like this. So this picture right here was on a beach in Texas. Um, first time camping on a beach, which was awesome until the bugs came out and then we were like, nope, not for us. <laughs> um, but uh, really just beautiful scenery, places to sleep. Um, we always say the opt for nature. Um, so for example, in Pictured Rocks, there's a beautiful boat tour. I'm sure it's beautiful. I didn't do it, but that you can take out and it will show you the rocks from the perspective of the water. Or there's a seven mile hike that you can take that is just as beautiful and is free and doesn't have a lot of tourists and things like that. Um, so we always like to say opt for nature. Um, I've kind of already mentioned this, but hit the grocery store instead of eating out and then take advantage of all the credit card points. So we had one credit card point um, that got points on gas stations and then we had another credit card that got points on um, grocery stores. So the, our, our top two um, expenses, we were getting credit card points for, which was great. So I actually um, went to my boss with my resignation letter and um, ended up coming out with a plan to work remotely. Um, so I worked about 15 to 20 hours um, a week from the road, um, which really actually helped me schedule out my days and um, stay on task. So every morning, almost every morning, we would go to a coffee shop and I would work for a few hours. And then while I was doing that, my boyfriend could um, kind of plan out where we were gonna go hiking or camping that night. Um, and then we'd go do that in the afternoon and then do it all again the next day. Um, spent, try to work more actually on the weekends when maybe the um, trails and things were busier. Um, so it helped to have that steady income and it was good for uh, my structure. However, I think if I actually would have given in my resignation, we would have traveled for longer because there was times when I felt guilty for traveling when everyone else was still at the office. Um, and I, so I worked for a florist. So holidays, um, 
no matter what the holiday is, it's going to be busier than other times of the year. So I felt um, encouraged <laughs> to come back for those, um, which kind of like, you know, kinds of puts a ripple in your travel plans. So um, there's pros and cons, but definitely <laughs> a pro is get, having a steady income come in. Um, so there's a few things that you can do. I don't, you know, if you're a photographer, a photographer or a designer, um, any kind of freelance work you can do, um, a writer, um, I, I encourage you to start working towards that goal. Um, so there's websites like Fiverr, Upwork, um, that are really good for freelance. Craigslist, you can find jobs like that. Um, there's one called Flex Jobs, and that's more for like remote work. Um, and there's actually full-time positions and part-time positions um, for all sorts of things. So um, you can look in those places. Um, like I said, if you can write design code, anything, you can do it from the road. Uh, work camper, if you have any kind of RV, this is going to be really good for you. So they, um, you're basically like a camp host and they, they usually look for people that are maybe married or something like that, um, where it can be two people working um, and then you, you have the same time off. So if you have like a Monday through Thursday off, you guys can go explore and do things. Um, but it's really good because they, most of them will pay you, but then also you get to stay there for free. Um, maybe they pay for your Wi-Fi and things like that too. So those are really good opportunities um, and really cool places. Um, and if you're getting kind of crafty, maybe sell, selling things on Etsy, whether it's painting or um, crocheting or something like that. Um, if maybe you own a home, but you want to travel, you could try to rent out your home. That could be a steady income. Um, I know that there's seasonal work at national parks. There's seasonal work at a lot of farms, um, like beet season. You can go pick beets for three weeks and make a decent amount of money and then go on your merry way. Um, it, like for me, so I said I work at a florist. We hire contract drivers around Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. Um, and I'm sure that there's other florists around the United States that do the same thing. So, um, you know, those drivers can make like $300 a day um, for a couple days that week. So it's, it's just like things like that that you have to look for and know about, um, about working on the road. So, yeah. Okay, traveling with pets. So that's our dog, Otter. She's being sassy. Um, this was in Austin. We were really surprised by Austin. There were so many dogs. It was super dog friendly. Um, went to this huge dog park, didn't have any kind of fences, so we were super nervous. And um, the dogs just hung out with each other. They didn't even care about going in the road, which was great. Um, something to know is that dogs aren't allowed on um, trails and national parks. And you might be shocked by that. You might not be, but we think it's actually a good thing, especially like think about in Yellowstone, it's like an active volcano. You don't really want dogs just running around everywhere. Um, people can't even pick up after their dogs in a, a regular city park. So, and, you know, if there's dogs trampling on national land, it's not the, not the best. So um, we, we honor that, we respect that. And because of that, um, we used apps like um, Rover, um, where you could rent a dog sitter for the day, for the night, for a week, um, and we would just find them around the national parks, um, and it would be maybe like $30 a day, and they would send you pictures, they'd take them on walks, um, very reputable, um, highly recommend on that. Bring Fido is one that you can find for, um, if the dogs are allowed at restaurants or patios, um, and then all trails are for any kind of hiking trails to make sure that um, it's allowed that you bring a pet on there. Um, just make sure you're bringing extra food and water because if you're thirsty or you're hungry, your dog's going to be thirsty and hungry as well. Um, and then we always say never leave your dogs behind wherever you go, they can go too. Um, our dog really, really just blossomed when um, we traveled with her. We had never had her off leash and now she's excellent off leash. Um, she loved exploring, but she was very like respondent and coming back to us. Um, so it was just a wonderful experience and I really encourage you to try it if you can. Okay, last but not least is some inspiration. Um, this is my absolute favorite Instagram follow. Um, I think it's Brianna Nadia or Madia. I always say it wrong. She's 
um, corrected people a few times, but um, they travel in this huge orange van and um, they have these two adorable dogs and actually they just got a third rescue. Um, so three dogs, two humans in this van, and I think she also has two snakes or something crazy like that. But um, she makes her money because she is a writer and every single caption she writes just moves me. She's an excellent writer, um, excellent advocate for public lands, for traveling with dogs, um, anything like that. So I highly recommend following her. Um, so she's a writer. Her husband um, is takes um, trips out into nature with kids, um, maybe troubled youth and things like that, and is a counselor. So it's really just an awesome duo there. Um, Bound for Nowhere is a good follow because they've had several different vehicles. Um, they have had a Volkswagen. They've had this, um, forgive me, I forget what they're called. Uh, Sun Raider, <laughs> um, and now they're traveling in this um, Toyota truck with this custom-built vacuum, um, and they're traveling with their cat. Um, they have some YouTube series um, all about all their builds, um, and they're both designers. That's how they make their money, and just um, really good follows as well there. Um, Live, Work, Wander is um, definitely a Vanagon um, Volkswagen crew. Um, they don't live in um, their Volkswagen now, but um, that's what how we learned about them. Um, they have tons of YouTube series, very funny, not very much of like hikers and things like that, just awesome photography and video skills um, and just humorous. So we really like to enjoy following them. Um, if you're on Instagram, following any of these will give you, it's like curated of different fan life People, so Van Life Diaries, Van Life Magazine, Project Van Life, Van There, pretty much anything you type in Van Life, um, you're going to come up with uh, lots of different accounts. So uh, Instagram really is about um, communities and there's community for everything. You know, we've found a lot of different Astro drivers through this. Um, I'm, I'm sure the Volkswagen community is crazy on van light or on um, Instagram. So no matter what your vehicle is or how you're traveling, um, you're going to find some friends on here. So here's just a few pictures. And um, I will say, um, so our, we named our van Luna and we are Rome to home. It's R-O-A-M-T-O home. And um, we have a website with a blog. Um, it's not hasn't been updated since we've been home, but um, we were updating it once a week while we were traveling. So there's a lot of good resources on there if you're looking for anything. Um, also feel free to email us um, and I'm happy to answer anything. Um, there is a video on the blog somewhere that um, shows the inside of our van and gives like a little tour. Um, I'm not going to give you a tour right now because recently moved and we use the van to move and it's a disaster. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, it, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to email me um, and we'll get back with you. And I really hope that you um, take the opportunity to travel um, because you're going to learn a lot about yourself, learn a lot about the world, um, and you'll never regret it. So thank you guys.